This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Track Farms and their excellent CBD products. You know, the more I've had CBD around the house as something that I can use on a daily basis, the more grateful I am that it is actually there as an option. I really have started to consider CBD as just part of the vitamin routine. Like when I'm taking my vitamins and supplements after breakfast, CBD is right there with them. Uh, because every time I learn more and more about how this reduces inflammation in my body, it's something that I feel like goes right there next to anything else that I'm taking that's a vitamin that is for my recovery and good for me. And Track Farms, frankly, I've tried a lot of CBDs. That's the only one that's ever been good. So give them a look, track-farms.com slash strangers. If you enter the code strangers at checkout, you're going to get that 15% off discount. Just give it a try. And I think you will also find that this should become a part of your recovery, vitamin process, whatever you do, it'll make a big difference in your body. Hey everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of the Strangers Worth Meeting podcast. I'm hanging out still in Indiana. It's been a good month, a long month, uh, but today I'm hanging out with Brendan Kane, uh, and he is a drummer around here uh, of you know, of, of moderate fame, I think in the area. So uh, I'm pretty stoked to talk with them and you know, we got some stogies going, sorry, mom and dad. Um, but, uh, it just felt right. It felt like the right vibe. <laughs> right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> it was very, very occasional. All right, mom. Um, but, uh, Brendan, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here, man. Man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Sure. Um, we've been already having all the fun chats. It feels always weird when I have to start the episode and we're already like talking. Right. But I'm like, I feel like I got to give people something at the beginning. Right. Yeah. yeah you have to. Can't just sit yeah. down and I like, mean, yeah, you have to. <laughs> how do you get around it? Not in my world. Yeah. I mean, people need to know who you are too. Yeah. So I just give a little bit of background about me. I Please mean, do. I'm, I'm not anybody really, <laughs> but, uh, I am, uh, my name is Brendan, and Brendan Kane. I'm a drummer. Um, I call myself the, your neighborhood friendly drummer. <laughs> uh, kind of like Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, I play for a few bands. My main band is uh, Lalo Cure. Um, I play many different genres. Uh, this past year, past couple years, I've been to Mexico, been to the Netherlands, playing. Uh, grew up in church. Uh, and that's where my music started. Been traveling and uh, playing professionally since I was 16. Um, and that's just a little bit about me. You teach as well, right? And Did I you teach mention as that? Well. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah, man. From like fun. all levels or anybody that. All levels, yeah. All it's, it's all fun. ages. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's challenging. Yeah. You know, especially if you uh, teach a kid. Um, I don't like to deny kids. One, because I started at the age of three. Sure. So, like, if I was able to do it at the age of three and I see that that kid has the same potential that I have or that I had at the age of three, then I'm not going to shun him away because he just doesn't understand yet. It's a way that you have to do it, a way you have to adapt your teaching method for that kid or for the adult to do it at right. that level. Mm -hmm. Right. What about people who have just no talent at all? Is it the same as when you're teaching a kid? <laughs> no um, inclination? Because here's the thing. I, I've I've was raised in music, so I get it, and I played lots of instruments. Right. But drums, man, that always for me is is not just a matter of musicality or understanding rhythm; it's a matter of coordination, almost more than anything. I mean, it's it's like I to get my muscles this. to this work and like that. This is my motto. Yeah. Um, if you can walk, you can play drums, because if you think about it, walking your you your limbs is uh, doing something different. Every single one of your limbs is doing something different when right. you walk. Right. So it's the same thing when you're playing the drums. But the thing is, when you're a kid, your brain is telling your limbs, hey, I need you to do this, I need you to do this, so you can walk. Right. It's the same thing with drumming. Right. Your, your brain is telling, you know, or you telling your brain, like, hey, I need you to tell my arms or tell my legs, I need them to do this yeah. and this. It may take some time, right? but you'll be able to do it. Now, the tricky thing is rhythm. That's the one thing. Like, rhythm is a, it's, it's, it, it's the tricky thing. Cause not everybody has rhythm. Some people can't walk, <laughs> yeah. Like to a to a beat. No, yeah. You are, know? Do you get people who are? I have to think though with something like drums. So, are, you think about any other instrument. It's like some guys like I want to start playing the guitar, right? And he he thinks pretty much anybody could pick up a guitar and learn to play that. And I agree mm -hmm. with you. There's there's probably a certain amount of rhythm that goes into that too. But at the end of the day, it, it's going to be a little less important at least 
on the guitar to an extent, right? I mean, to an, to an extent because the gu- guitar is melody, so, right? Yeah. So if someone would have to. What I'm saying is, someone would have to be somewhat self-aware to say, like, I either can hold a rhythm, mm-hmm. and maybe drums are a good fit with for me. Yeah. So do you get a lot, of, or do you get people who are just have no self-awareness that they don't know what rhythm is? Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, you do, and I, know, I, I do. Um, there's some who do have it and don't. You yeah. know, and it's just like I apply it to anything. Like, I mean, I used to be a basketball player as well. Some people can play. Some people just they ain't got it, yeah. you know, and it's it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it because you can still enjoy something even though you can't particularly play it, right. you know. So uh, my job as a teacher is to define that. Are they able to do it or are they not able to do it? And if they aren't able to do it, then I am. It's my responsibility to let them know that they're not capable of doing that, even though it's hard. <laughs> yeah. But the thing, I will try all my resources before I get there. Yeah. You know? Have you ever had to do that? Seems, Only once. Seems sad. Only once. That'd be hard. It'd be like a little dream crushing. Yeah, man. It, it hurts because I'm a person that I love challenges. Right. You know, I love challenges. I love to prove people wrong. Yeah. I feed off of it. Right. That's that's. That's how I roll as a musician. I feed off challenges. So, you know, I if it's, I don't like to say no, but it, it I will use all my resources before I get to that point. And I only had to do it with one person. So yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So, why did you start playing in the first place? Honestly, um, I kind of just fell in love with it as a kid. You know, like I saw like growing up in church and. In my church world, uh, musicians were bred in church. You know, uh, you, 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 you were, if you were raised in church as a musician, you had to go through certain things. Yeah. So you saw other musicians going through those things. And in my time, at a young age, seeing those different musicians around my city, you know, playing and, you know, gospel music is so musical it's underrated as far as the musical part of it. The only right. reason it's underrated is because it's about, you know, it's a religious, it's a religious music. So a lot of people don't like to listen to the religious music, but the music part of it is epic. Yeah. <laughs> you say like it's not real music, like it doesn't fall in the same category for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah it doesn't. I mean, un- unfortunately, people, when people look at gospel music, they just look at, oh, it's just a whole bunch of, you know, people just singing about God. Yeah. But if you listen to the music of it and the artistry and the musicianship, it will blow your mind because right. it's some of the stuff that you can you would never hear. Yeah. And to be honest, in the real world, a lot of the musicians that are hired for other genres of music are majority musicians that grew up in church. Right. And that's just that's factual. That's all real. And that's where you can get a paycheck. A lot of musicians too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you're just trying to make it, and you're just trying to make to it, just go ahead and play in church. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying not to blow smoke in your face, but it's getting difficult. Oh man, it's all good. We're I'm, sitting. We're it's sitting. Happened to you too. So, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wind keeps shifting on me today, but it's just kind of calm right now. We're sitting outside the campsite uh, here in Elkhart, and I was I'm out of sorts because uh, Andrew and I just moved into the the new Alta that we got into at the time of this recording, at least. And it's uh, pretty dope. yeah, it's not bad, right? It's pretty dope. I think it's a pretty good way to live. Um, the thing is, this wouldn't be a type of rig uh, that I, th- I don't know that would normally fit us, um, except for the fact that we do have this opportunity to work with East to West. Like right. we were in a different type of rig before; it was a little more in our price range, right. uh, you know. And it's it, it's it's kind of cool to explore like the other options that are out there. Like this one's got the outdoor kitchen and all sorts of things that just. It's, oh, I didn't yeah, see that. it just opens up right oh, there. Oh, the kitchen. Okay. I got a stove and a fridge, and <laughs> that's it's pretty. Just, that's pretty dope. Yeah, it's not. It's not a bad way to go. It's the first time I think I've done an episode at the campground, which is kind of cool. Usually, I travel out with yeah. all the different guests. Okay, but so how do you, you maneuver me with that? Like taking the or oh, or do you ride your in there? So you the bike. yeah, we've got the truck, uh, which Andrea's got. She's out buying clothes, okay. you know, and. Uh, like, you know, like Andrea does. No, I'm just kidding. She's actually really good about it because uh, she can't own that many clothes. So she is, like, really low-key about buying anything, gotcha. which I love. Um, and then I got the bike there, which we throw in the back of the truck. So, And that's kind of part of the show. That's why I put it on the cover of the artwork and everything because it's just, like, that's, that's honestly how I get around everybody. Yeah. 
But it's a good space, so sorry, people, if you hear some wind or some birds or some kids yelling. They're riding those, those you know, those electric cars kids have now. <laughs> That's a weird toy to me, man. Like Why? Did you have one as a kid? Yeah. You did? I loved it. What was it? What I kind of car was it? <laughs> I loved it. I don't know, man. It just seems like... I think it's good. I'm not. I'm not trying to be some sort of stick. It wasn't but, mine. It was uh-oh. my brother's, but I loved it still because I always drove it when I was with him. There's no difference when it's two siblings and yeah. their toys. It's all yeah. the same. <laughs> <laughs> Who writes the rules on that? Right. I don't know. It just seems like. It seems like, these kids are getting used to experiencing the outdoors in a certain way, like through the experience of a car, and that's what I worry is that a lot of people get the outdoors through their car windows, and that's what you get. Mm, and it's yeah. like, maybe we're wiring something there. Yeah. Like, this is the fun toy. You know, commuting will be great. One day you'll get to drive two hours a day. How fun will that be? And it wires your brain a little. I mean, I, I, I totally understand that because I was just talking about something similar to that uh, with a friend of mine. And I was like, man, these kids don't know anything about going outside and playing for hours outside all day all day you know (laughs) now kids are on Fortnite and like for hours you know are on tv watching tv for hours you know and they don't understand the joy of going outside and you know kind of living life as a childhood outside you know i was just talking about that and i feel like it's the same thing with the truck thing like you know you only looking you know, you only know about the outside world through the window. Right. You know. Right. It's not. That's not cool. It's not fair. You losing the. Te- you losing the connection. Yeah. Some kids, I think that's really true for. And that's the thing is, I feel jaded because I didn't grow up with video games, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm really happy that my parents didn't do that because I don't know if, I think that would have been kind of attractive to me, uh, like my personality, just feeling like getting hooked into video games. Right. But then you reach past a certain age, and it's like. I don't feel that urge anymore. I don't feel any need to, to play video games. Exactly. I can play for like five minutes and I'm just done. I'm just so bored of it. Yeah. But I don't know if I would be the same way if I had him as a kid. So, but some kids I think are fine. Some kids I think can do that and they can go and be really functioning adults and still love the outdoors. You just don't know. But I mean, that's why it's great to not be a parent because I don't really have to decide. It's Say everybody it else's again, decision. For the people in the back so yeah. they can hear it. <laughs> yeah. It's up, to, it's up to those individuals. But, yeah, if you if you don't know what your decision would be, maybe don't have a kid just yet. Figure it out first. Decide yeah. what you want to do. Yeah. How you're going to roll with it. Because they're going to ask, and they're going to go play it at their friend's house, and you're going to be the bad guy if you say no. And you got to you got to expect and prepare to be the bad guy. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't hide the world from them. They're going to see the iPads. They're going to see the Minecraft. They're going to see. Going to see all of it. You know those videos. This is a weird thing I was talking about yesterday. Those videos on YouTube of. Um, it's like people opening like kids' presents. It's like a whole thing. People make YouTube videos of them opening like like toy eggs with mm-hmm. like little prizes inside or like kids' presents. What? And they'll put these up. Kids will watch these for hours at a time. What? And these channels make like millions of dollars from doing this on advertising. Dude, I did not know that. Yeah, it's weird. That's crazy. <laughs> it, it taps into some kids like dopamine. It just goes nuts for them and they just have to watch this and they can't stop watching it. And it's just so exciting. It's like, what's in the next toy egg? What? That's messing with people's minds right there. <laughs> Young people's minds. You're hardcore. Do you inhale that? Uh, a little bit of it. No, a lot. Just a little? I yeah. can't do that. Because, I mean, I when I inhale it, uh, I inhale my black and mouth. So, do you? Yeah. Those, I feel like you can go either way. A lot of people yeah, do some, and some people don't. Exactly. But this, I inhaled the first time. I was like, oh. Yeah, I, <laughs> I should have warned you, man. That was rude of me. I I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just sometimes it's one of those things where you assume everybody knows exactly how everything that you do works, and you're like, oh yeah, it's just like that. Oh no, yeah, no. I totally understand. Should have, yeah, yeah. But um, you'd probably be the same way if I came in and sat down at a drum kit. But that's not true, though. You're great. You're probably a great teacher, so oh, yeah. you I'll wouldn't be, assume you I knew okay. anything. Yeah, you would be okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what you think. You never heard me try. <laughs> So uh, tell me, I'm getting way, way far afield, but I told you that's the point. Um, tell me about La Locura, your, uh, the band that you're part of. Man. Is that not working? So, man, uh, La Locura. 
first of all, it's just an amazing band. I'll give you a little background about it. Uh, the the leader of the band is Rafael Chavez. He is the guitar player. Um, and then we have Sam K, who is the saxophone player. Sonny Carrero, um, he is the the percussionist. Then I am the drummer, Brendan Kane. And then we have uh, my cousin and my best friend, uh, Terrell Ross on keys. And then my other bro slash brother um, on bass, Kalen Dickens. Nice. And um, it started with, as a Latin um, rock band. But we have kind of formed it now into a Latin fusion slash rock band because of the different textures of sounds that we add to it now. Okay. Um, I've been playing with Lalo since uh, three, I mean, since uh, I would say about three years. Um, it, was, it was another five piece, you know, they did some furniture moving and then added a little bit of, uh, <laughs> as my lead guitar player says, we had a little bit of color to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you listen to person. like, yeah. yeah. So, and the funny thing is that uh, me, my uh, cousin, and my best friend, uh, we all grew up together, you know, in church. You know, like, we've been best friends ever since we were, like, babies. So, to the one thing I love about Lalo is that, you know, ever since we were kids, we always said that we were, we were going to be in a band together. Uh, and we did. You know, years later, we are. And right. um, it, it's it's just amazing to see the different... Uh, cultures come together to make one thing of music. Like our lyrics are in Spanish. Um, the one thing I love um, about how Raph writes, he's the, he's the writer, um, he makes the songs. Uh, the one thing I love about how Raph writes is that he writes about real things that's going on. Like we just had a, a single come out called uh, Franca Sestanos. Uh, Franca Sestanos. Oh, he's gonna be so bad that I messed it up. <laughs> yeah, we'll cut it. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I don't cut anything. <laughs> I don't have the time it's to sit right. down and re-listen to this. We're one. just gonna call it Franca. Or um, it's in English, Stars and Stripes. That's what it's called. And it's pretty much uh, the song is talking about, you know, forget the struggles of the world, forget what's going on, but this is how we're living right now. Um, it just means. At the time like this, it it said a lot, you know. It says it says a lot, and not only that, the music is pretty dope behind it. And um, it's funny because Lalo has its own own. Uh, we have our own little system. Um, Raphael, uh, he is the songwriter, and then you know when he comes up with a new song, he'll talk to uh, either me or Kalen, and Kalen is our set list person, and he is like. Uh, the bass player he's our set list person slash md and uh, if you don't know what md is uh for the people who don't know md is it's a music director so he's pretty much in charge of uh, what we play in the band for that show you know he gets the setup for all the songs in order and has us play that way and then we you know we just flow with that um so like every person and the band has a different role to play. And when we put that role, when we all do our roles the correct way, you get Lalo. And so Lalo is a, but that's just a little bit about Lalo. I love that, man. Yeah, man. I think, I really, honestly think someone needs to listen to what you just said and kind of rewrite your bio online. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Because I went and I was reading, I was trying to see, like, what's up with these guys. And I got to listen to some music, which is, which is cool. It's a pipe one. So it goes from the side, which is... Uh, that's weird. I was like, what the? I just opened yeah. my finger. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> See, this is me just assuming again. No, what it really is is it's tough on a podcast. I always want to avoid, like, dead air. Right. But, like, you need dead air. It's a good yeah, thing. Yeah, it's okay. It's part of podcast. It's not, it's, that's why it's not radio. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I, I, I kind of came in with the thing, like, oh, it's going to be like radio. So, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, no. I like this better. <laughs> nah. I mean, there are podcasts that do it like that, but I, I think they're kind of boring. Um, I don't. I don't know why. I don't want to listen to them though. I just don't find it engaging because you don't want something that's that highly produced. Yeah. Um, you want something a little more natural. But um, I'm getting very distracted. No, it's now. okay. This is yeah. good. Um, so you 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 laid out a lot of things there, and I I was curious about some of them. Particularly, I think the first one I was wanted to stop you on almost was why what makes it a fusion instead of just Spanish rock? What makes it? 
what's the what's the fusion part? I don't even know what fusion means in music. Fusion, uh, there's so there's different genres or there's different. So you have different genres. Oh, let me explain it like this, because it's hard to explain to in a certain way to an idiot. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> no. It's just hard to explain to a person that that's not a musician or something like that. Um, I'm a musician? Are you? Yeah, but what? listeners might not be. Okay. What? Yeah, man. What do you play? Side note. Name it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I play guitar, Dope. and I used to play piano as a kid, like oh. most people. But I can still keep up. Yeah. And I sing, like, Dope. still kind of sing when I can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I got so, yeah, super, to the listeners super low voice. And oh, it works. Yeah. We don't have to talk about that later. There's no, you. there's no, this frustrates me, as someone with a low voice, there's no pop music for people with low voices. So I can't I sing yeah. songs, like, that really push my range and, like, do interesting things. Yeah. Right. But but still explain it like I'm an idiot because I am an idiot and uh, the people listening may not have that musical background. So that's cool. right, right. So fusion. If you have so there's different uh, genres. Um, you have jazz, rock, you know, uh, gospel, whatever it is, Christian. But you have different sub genres within those genres of music, and so fusion will fall under jazz a little bit. Um, so if you think about it, our band is more jazzy and rockish all at the same time. Right. But we say fusion because fusion, it's, it's, a, it's a fuse between, two, uh, between a few genres. So that's why fusion music, when you hear fusion genres or fusion music, it sounds like it doesn't sound like something that's one uh, simple genre. It's like something that's mixed. But it kinda, it's kind of a branch from jazz, jazz I should say. I think that's better to me. I don't know. I think I like things that yeah. like I like it when bands are just their own thing. Right. Like name a genre after my band, asshole, as opposed to like here's my band now, you know, I'm right. gonna play in this genre. And I love genre. I love uh, bands who create their genre. Um there's a band that's from South Bend. Uh two of my, my good guys, uh Eli Kahn and Arthur Schroeder and uh, they're called After Hours. And they have created their own genre called Head Not Jazz. And when you listen to their music, you will see exactly why it's called Head Not Jazz. And so they created their own genre. And there's another artist in Top Bend uh, named Mickey Miller, who is like my biggest inspiration, one of my biggest motivators of still doing music. Um, and she has her own resume. She's amazing, um, does a lot of work professionally now. And she has her own music. Well, it was originally created by her brother, but she made it into her own. Um, and the music is called Dream Music. But it is s- something you would never hear. Something yeah. you only, she and that whole thing, will, will, it can only create because nobody else can do it. And it's just that that's what it is. And it's, that's kind of how I see Lalo now, you know. Right. We created our own genre, which is fusion and Latin mixed. But not a lot of people can, you know, reciprocate that. Yeah, you know, and do it. So that's what makes it pretty cool. It doesn't sound like anything else that you hear when you listen yeah, exactly. to it. It sounds like it's entire. I mean, that's I. You hear the roots mm-hmm. of what of what other types of music comes from, but it's completely its own thing, mm-hmm. without a doubt. But uh, that's kind of cool, actually. I'm thinking back. I uh, a few episodes ago. Oh man, I had a um, a friend on Marcos Mena from California and he's got a band called Standards. Right. And he calls it math rock. And I don't think he invented math rock. I think mm-hmm. it was already a genre. Okay. But he's kind of done his own spin on it. And now he's right. got like fruit rock, I think is what he calls it, which I think is kind of a joke and he puts fruit on all of his I mean, but if like it that. goes, it goes and they but can yeah, be a genre. Yeah. He does this he has this guitar tapping technique mm-hmm. where he's all he does is well not all he does, but he's he's tapping the frets in a way where he's playing a bass line and the melody at the same time, right. and they're completely out of sync, and I have no what? idea how he does. I'll show you him after this. That yeah. is pretty dope. He's, he's great. He just wrote the music for, so Andrew and I are doing this whole Wild Hickson's thing with this RV, okay, making content, and he just wrote our like theme music, and I was really stoked about it, because oh, it sounds cool. Oh, that is dope. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's good to make musician friends, because like, at some point, I'll start more more and more and more podcasts, and I'll just be like, hey, hey, man. <laughs> hey, man, you want to help me out a little <laughs> okay, bit? Hook me oh, up. yeah, man, I got mm-hmm. you. Yeah. And I pay my musician friends. Hey, that's a real thing. Don't at me. That is a real thing. I say, how much do you charge, man, for this? Am I getting a family and friends rate? I guarantee it. I don't ask for it. But you pretty much are. But uh, that's better. Yeah, that's better. At least you you acknowledge that, hey, I pay my musician friends. I just don't ask them to come. Yeah. You know, 
That's his job. That's what he does. Yeah, all yeah. Long. So yeah, you can still be friends and still respect yeah. them for their talent, you know, and for their gift. Right. I call it a gift, you know. Um, I am a person I call. It, I don't call it talent because everybody has a talent or a skill, but not everybody has a gift that like undersells it. Yeah. Like you think it's more like something. I feel like a, yeah. I feel like you when you call things a talent or a skill, I feel like you are devaluing yourself mm. for your from your gift. You know. Where do you stand on the like? Let's let's use your word gift versus uh, time and training and effort kind of debate. Like, can someone do it? without so a natural a natural ability let's say all right let me put like this um growing up in church we call it an anointing that's what we call it um the difference is and you can almost see it uh when you hear different artists play and different musicians play um, some some musicians can practice all their life, you know, be as technical as, you know, the next person, like know everything by the book, but they may not have the gift that I'm talking about or what I call anointing. Um, you only have a certain few. I'm not going to throw out names in there. I'm just it's just nah, I'm not going to say names as examples because I don't want I don't want to. be Right. Like well, it's difficult, but, too, because it's yeah. not like. It's not like the music industry selects people with, yeah. w- if I'm connecting with what you're saying, it's not like people with a gift are always the ones who make it in the music industry and no. people without it are the ones who don't. That's not how the, the music The people that works. have like the session jobs are usually people who are more technical. Yeah. Because, you know, they're, they, they have it by the book. And when you're dealing with studio work and, you know, session work, a lot of those artists don't want, uh, they don't want, you know, somebody just to chop all over their you know all over their song they right. want somebody just to do it like buy the book get their stuff done because you at the end of the day you're playing for the artist yeah so you know a lot of people with the gift want to just oh well let me just remake this stuff yeah it's not that's not what you're supposed to do as an artist you know or as a musician yeah um but i will say you know when it comes to live performances and like performing for you know on big stages having the gift I feel like it's a lot better than not having a gift just because you can, uh, let me see. I say you can express yourself a little bit better than Mm -hmm. you are technically. Um, you can tell, man, like I, I, like I said, for me, maybe it's because I can tell, uh, because I'm a musician and I was raised in church, but I can hear the difference between somebody, you know, that has all like, Oh yeah, they got it. Or they like, Oh, you know, they're really good. You know? Right. (laughs) Right. <laughs> yeah, they're good, but where's the like? They're missing something. They're yeah. missing some soul. Like they're missing. Their, yeah, there's something's something's missing. They're just great, but something is missing. Yeah, I f- I I trans I'm translating everything you're saying through my filter, which is mostly singers. Yeah, because that's what I think more of. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just because that's my background. But it's the same thing. It's like it's like the people who are the most technically talented. Those are the ones who win the voice. Like those are the ones who are like, yeah, you're you're just like pure pop music, exactly what we're looking for. But you look at some of the best musicians. Andrew and I talk about this all the time. Like some amazing singers who would never have won the voice. Bob Dylan's not winning the voice, no. man. No, he, he's too outside. But he's, he's got a, that gift that you're talking gift. about. Yeah, um, I can think of any Billy Corgan is another one I think of. Smashing Pumpkins, like that dude is not winning the voice. They're gonna hear him for a second and be like, dude. You're doing this nasal thing. I don't get it. Cut it out. Yeah. Stop doing it. But they got the gift. They got the gift. See what I'm saying? And like you're right. Like crazy too. It, there we go. Yeah. You know, it's always something that like people that's the one thing about being a musician. And that's one thing I take pride about being a musician, especially when I play because I don't just play for Lalo. I my thing, my goal in being a musician and being a drummer is to be a um a variety genre drummer. That's what I call it, like like to call it. Yeah. It's a person who likes to play all genres of music. You know, yesterday I just had a show and I'm playing country. You know, you know, last week play jazz. You know, there's different types of arenas that I play in, but I appreciate it because one, I grow as a musician, one. Two, I take pride in learning other genres. Like I love it. You know, it's just something about it. And two, it helps me enhance my gift. Mm-hmm. You know, not everybody can do it. Yeah. You know, 
I like I said, and another thing, I like challenges, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna say no. I'm yeah. just gonna study up on it and see what I can do. But, I feel like that's the only way to learn stuff. You have to like, it. you have to like being challenged. You have to like failing for a while. Oh no, failure comes with fail that journey. Over and over again. Failure comes with the journey of being a musician, and some people don't know how to fail the correct way. That's what I've been learning a lot as a musician. How do you fail correctly as a musician? Is it in the performance or in your practice or like? It's in your mindset, honestly. Okay. Um, a lot of musicians give up way too quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, if they feel like there is a roadblock, they're like, man, well, okay, well, i just do something different. Instead of being like, oh, there's a roadblock. How do I get around it? How do I get around it? Because it's in my way. So do I, need these, do I need to just push past it? Do I need to climb over it? Do I need to get another tool? So I can, it can help me get there and help me get past it? Or am I just going to just be like, all right, I'm done? So when I'm, I, I literally love the analogy of a roadblock in general and the way you're describing it in particular, mostly because <clears throat> I think about all those fucks on the highway yep. who see actual roadblocks mm-hmm. and go right, <laughs> around, right around them. It. Like, wh- why do we apply? That's, I have a destination to get to. Why? Yeah, this, thing? this isn't in my way. You yeah. see people driving on the wrong side of the road. Like around cones, they're not supposed to be around. That's just gonna burn you. I need to go <laughs> refill that. Like, <laughs> I have to stop if I'm gonna do that. No, it's okay. It's okay. Don't even worry about it. Hmm. Uh, you have one? Nah. You wanna do me the honors and <laughs> here? Let me just let me at least give you some wind guard here. Just hold your hands up. trying to fight the wind keep the cigar lit it's because i'm making you talk too much you can't keep it lit a little bit more we're taking a cigar break it's all good okay you know honestly my fingers are kind of dead from cooking anyway i don't really burn them that much anymore yeah these stupid butane lighters i mean they're great but i've never found a screwdriver that actually turns that thing and you have to turn it to refill it. So I can only ever get it like halfway full. Which is just like a shame. Understandable. I get it. Yeah, those things suck though. I hate those type of lighters. Yeah. I, did. <laughs> I mean, Honestly. they're supposed to be really good, but like that's what the Zippo's for. That never fails you. Yeah, oh yeah. They never fail. Mm-mm. I have to fill them a lot though. <laughs> which is kind of a pain. Um, What were we talking about? Roadblocks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Roadblocks. Roadblocks. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the number of times you're going down a road, and the other lane is closed, and you see someone who's literally just coming your way because they're like, um, this is this is inconvenient to me. I'm going to go around this thing. Yeah. But that's not how they treat their life. Like, I feel like most people, like you're saying, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's we can't handle sort of hypothetical roadblocks that are in our mind, mm-hmm. but a lot of things day to day, we just like go straight around. It doesn't bother us. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that is. There's some challenges that we're just not, we just that just don't bother us, and then there's other ones that we we run away from so much. There's there's that's very true. So like how I look at it, I use a perfect example as this year, 2020. It's been a crazy year all the way around. Yeah, you know we're all tired. Everybody's just tired. Everybody, you know, especially musicians. You know, as a musician, it was it's the toughest because you have to pretty much your whole year is canceled. So for me and what I discussed with our band too, you know, because we had hit a low point. We was like, man, we don't know what we want to do. We want to we want to keep our us and our family safe, but we also want to figure out what we're going to do and take our next step. Mm-hmm. You know, are we going to just stop for the year or are we going, you know, try to push it through, try to make something work where we can still work with or work around this roadblock, which is 2020, which is COVID. And this was earlier when COVID like started happening and what I will say is that 2020 may show, to me, it showed who the real um, lovers of music are and who really loves their craft because you saw those people coming up with different ways to keep their music alive. Yeah. And you saw others just fail and like, oh, we're going to take off just because, you know, we want we don't want to deal with that. Well, even though 2020 is a crazy year, it's also been a lot of blessings in disguise from it too. So, like... For instance, as you know, our band, we didn't had a lot of more open doors now in 2020 than we had previously. 
you know, because, you know, we just released our EP in May, you know, our first EP of the new band in May. And then, you know, we released a couple singles. You know, we didn't do that last year. Well, we didn't have time to do that last year mm-hmm. either. Yeah. So now that we have the time, it's like, what are you going to do? Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I say about, like, 2020 is kind of a blessing in disguise. And it kind of show who the, you know, who's truly capable of getting around those roadblocks. Yeah. It's put, you know? it's putting that mirror right up to people right now. Yeah. Because it's like, all right, you said, you said if I, if I ever quit this job and I have something else I'm going to do, or if I ever have the time for it, man, I just don't have any time for this. It's like, all right, here's the time. What are you going to do? At the time, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And that's also coming from someone who, this situation has been, I, I, it's been okay for us. I live on the road. I can be where I need to right. be. I'm not stuck in Chicago. I'm not stuck exactly. in New York or LA. I can be wherever I want to be at any time. I can avoid the bad stuff. I can stay out of the states where they've got it bad. Mm-hmm. That's not true for everybody, and I know that. But at the same time, I do think that you have one life, and a lot of it you can control, mm-hmm. and you can control even more of it, which people seem to want to. You control even more of it when something crazy happens. When crazy shit happens that is outside of your control, right. it weirdly offers you a chance to have more control because it's it's just a decision. It's just another decision you're going to make, and what yeah. are you going to do? Yeah. And... um you're either going to adapt or you're not. I don't know. Yeah, you just, that, and that's, that's pretty it, much the, the moral of it. It's just either going to adapt or you're just going to stay still or give up. I don't like giving up. I don't like giving up. I never – I had a few times where I quit something, and that feeling of quitting sucks, yo. Yeah. And uh, I'm not a person that, that – especially if it's something that I truly believe in and truly invested majority of my life in – I don't see, I don't feel comfortable with quitting that, you know, even when things are in my way. 2020 is in my way. But am I going to quit? No, I'm going to find a way around it. Like, you know, and I feel like that applies to life, that applies to everything, you know, not just musicians. I mean, I'm talking about people who are just passionate about what they do. Yeah. Somebody that works in, you know, businesses, like whatever, they make clothes or they, you know, they do hair, you know, or, you know, bartenders, uh, barbers. You see the real ones out here because they figured out another way to get around that roadblock. You know, bar the barbers and stuff, I've been seeing online, people have been having mobile barber, barber mm-hmm. places. They'll have, they'll buy like a a trailer, yeah, like, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, a trailer, take it with them and yeah. have a mobile service, mm-hmm. you know. And others is like, oh, my shop is closed, I can't do nothing. Would you get in someone's van with a pair of scissors? It's like, hey man, get in the van. It would have to be well. A barber for me is more of a of a trust thing. So if if I would say yes, only because it would be the barber that I'm already comfortable with. Right. Right. That's but if I point. wasn't, then no. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah. But with my beard only, mm-hmm. not with my hair. That I stopped going to people on. But like someone who's trying to mess up my beard, like no. Yeah. That's no. not gonna happen. I'll just do it myself. I'll do it poorly myself before letting someone else do it poorly who I don't trust. Exactly. Exactly. Because at least I know what I did before it's all chopped off. It's getting windy out. I hope that's not on the episode, but, you know, screw it at the same time. Because it's really nice out. It's really nice out here, man. It's quiet, too. Yeah. All I need is a pond and I can go fishing. <laughs> do you do a lot of fishing? Oh, what? Yes. Me and the yeah. bass player, me and my bass player, we go fishing almost every day. Really? Yes. So you're uh, you're mostly in South Bend then, yes. area, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So our band Lalo is based out of Goshen, but uh, half our band pretty much lives in South Bend. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you guys meet up, practice there. That's the spot. Yeah. What are you fishing for? Do you fish like just for fun, or do you eat it for for game? Uh, catch some. What do you catch around here? Man, so I'm trying to catch a pike. Uh, do they have pike in what this area? Yes. You're saying what? Like I would know. I don't know anything about fishing. What? <laughs> I don't know a thing, man. Oh man, dude, we gotta go fishing, man. Okay, it's gonna be fun. Let's do it. But like, yeah, dude, pike. Some when I uh, I usually go to this place called Pinhook, and uh, I went there in the morning one day, and this guy caught a four foot pike. And like, hey, when I say this mud it was huge, it was big. Yeah. But uh, we get catfish. You, uh, if you fish the St. Joe River, 
Um, like even downtown South Bend, you can go over there and it's a place called Howard Park or you can go to Mishawaka and still fish the river over there. It's the same thing. And people be catching catfish that's like four or five feet long, you know, huge catfish. And do I, I don't like to eat a lot of fish like that, but I do it for just for the fun of it. It right. is relaxing for sure. Do you go on a boat or are you just off the shore or off the dock or something? Off the shore, off the, off the dock. Um, they want me to go. My friends and stuff want me to go on a boat. I'm not too thrilled about that. Yeah. You know? I can swim. I just rather not. I, re- I like to have control of my situation. Yeah. If I'm on a boat and there's a whole bunch of water around me and there's two people on the boat, I can't control those two people if they tip over the boat. Mm-hmm. And I don't really want to be tipped over. We go on a kayak or something like that, though. Uh, that's too close to the water. Yeah. I, I feel <laughs> like the thing about it, fishing from a kayak would be like, you have too much stuff in your hands. Mm-hmm. Like when I've gone kayaking before, I just feel like I'm so cramped. I have two feet of like radius around my body to try to work with. And if I had a fishing pole and I'm trying to get a fish off a hook, I'm just going to start dumping things in the water. Like Yeah, like, well, that, and it's like, for me, it's too, I'm too close to the water. I'm way too close to the water in the kayak. What makes you worry about being too close to the water? Tipping. Like, I, it's like, I don't know. I'm way too close to the, the water. The wide ones won't do it on you, though. Like a really wide kayak, it's really, really hard to tip. You'd have to be trying, I think, to tip like a really wide kayak. I understand that. Yeah, I understand. But that. I also feel like it is creepy, though. I, I think it's kind of creepy. I'm not used. To, I'm not used to it. I, I don't. Do I've seen like people lot. like. Uh, I used to live in Florida, and uh, I remember we went kayaking in Florida, and there was a big gator. Yeah, I wouldn't do it there. And no, so every, I think, I think that's really what the problem is now. And I know there's no gators here, or nothing like that. But it's still the thought. <laughs> And I'm that close, and I remember you're seeing so, that gator. You're you know? so spot on. Yeah, dude. and, like, I remember seeing that gator and just go yeah. right between all of us. And I'm like, no. So I, why would I want to kayak here when a big old catfish or pike can come get me? Get me? No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I think open water is freaky. And I've talked about this in the podcast before, and I feel ridiculous about it, but <clears throat> I'm a grown man. But if I'm swimming in a lake and I can't see my feet in a lake, I'm picturing Jaws. I'm picturing Mm -hmm. a great white below me Mm -hmm. looking up at me like I'm lunch or not even lunch because Jaws was like doing it for fun. Like that was what was sick about that movie. That was was creepy about it. It's not Nate. It's not like a natural thing. It was like hunting humans. Like that's what I'm picturing though. I'm terrified of it and I can't get over it. And even in the lake and I'm like, this is really stupid. But like, I can't stop picturing that. I'll do it. Got to face your fears. I mean, yeah. And there's, there's times where, Actually, you know, I I told my friends that I would do it because you do have a better time fishing on a boat because you can, you can get to better spots. You know, you only you're limited when you're on a dock and you, you don't get only, your line all tangled up because you can like cast way into the shallow spots. And, and then that. you got the you got the weeds and stuff like that mm-hmm. to deal with. Like, so, yeah, I get it. And I will, you know, eventually. Yeah. But uh, I'm not a person that likes to go fishing on a boat, mm-hmm. but I will. It's all funny, all this boating talk. Andrew and I were just on a boat last night. Mm-hmm. We went out with some of the people that we're working with here at East to West. East to West, everybody. Um, <laughs> they don't sponsor this podcast, though. This is original. <laughs> this is all me and track farms. Um, but we were out on this pontoon boat, and it's like one of those gas-powered ones, which mm-hmm. I had never been on before. And that was oh, so fast. yeah. That must be I didn't floating. know. I was thinking pontoon boat. I'm just chilling, hanging out. And then oh, he man. Some opens of them it up. Floating. Yeah. <laughs> so they're doing this thing in this neighborhood. It's on the St. Joe River. And um, it's all these pontoon boats, like whole neighborhoods of people, probably like 40 boats maybe, Mm -hmm. all pull up in one spot and there's someone playing music off of like someone's back porch that lives off the river. And so you like anchor and you just, you're all just like floating there listening to music. They have it on a big PA system. It's like a whole community thing. Wait, I, I, that's where I was yesterday. It was called on the river. Stop it. Yeah. That's where I played at yesterday. Where, where were you? You were playing drums. Yep. At a gig with Jesse Jane. That's not her name. Julia James. Julia James. Yeah. You're you're absolutely kidding me. No, I'm serious. That's where I was yesterday. So as Andrea and I are sitting there, uh huh, watching her sing. She's awesome, by the way. Yeah. I should get her on the show. Um, Andrea's like, what if he's played drums for like this event before? And I was like, I no, was playing no. here the whole time yesterday. Yeah. Are you fucking with me? No, I'm so. I would have seen you. She had a Facebook Dude, live. Th- yeah, look at the drummer. It was a Pearl kit, Burgundy. It's my no, new I kit. I do believe you. <laughs> I just want to see it. That was a fun it. show. That was uh, my guy Joey B. Joey Bishop was on bass. 
So it was a three piece. It was me, her, and then Joey Bishop. She didn't post any any pictures. Nah, uh, she didn't get pictures. Uh, it she was, was doing a video. live, but yep. I think it was just on her. Okay, I see. Oh no, here's the live. You're kidding. That's so so funny. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. That's so great. You guys were awesome, man. Thanks, she was man. killing it. She did great. Do you need a better lighter? Is that going out on you again? I think I'm going to switch to my black and my own. You do man. it. You do it. It's not for everybody. I have a bunch left over still from my wedding. That's why I have it. This whole thing. That's so funny that you were there. Well, man, that was a good show. That Thanks, was cool. Man. Appreciate it. Yeah. You, you want to know something funny? Killing it. What's up? Never had a rehearsal first time playing with her. So how do you do that on the on the drum? Do you have to know the song? Because, like, is she calling out songs that you may or may not have heard? She just start playing, and I had to put something to it. So you're keeping time, roughly, and you know the counts, and then you've got some fills that you'll throw in when it feels right. And I, so how I do it, like, a lot of the people that I do play for around here never give me a set list, but they love doing that because they want me – for some reason, for some reason, they like how what I put to their to whatever they do. But if I listen to the music first, they think I'm just going to just play whatever to the music is. But they want me to play what I hear to what they play. Do you prefer it that way? Like, do you like it? If they like it, uh, like, yes and yes and no. This. Only because I don't have to study that music like that, you know. Um, but. It's a, it is a lot easier just for me to put, um, you know, my own taste on what they do. But at the same time, me being the musician that I am, I'd rather just have a guideline to, to at least listen to. Right. Uh, like, hey, you know, okay, I can listen to this. Oh, this is what this sound like. And then I can put my own spin based off what I just listened to yeah. instead of me just going based off my head. Yeah. Because you got to, how I look at it is that, okay, yeah, we may be, you may know this music and you know you may like how I play it, you know, whatever, but there are certain songs, there are classics that need to be played a certain way yeah. that other people know. For instance, Journey, you know. Yeah, she did Don't Stop Believing last night. And if you don't know, you know, that drum move, or I can feel it in the air, moving in the air, then okay. oh, yeah. if dun, you don't dun, 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 if dun, you don't know yeah. none of that stuff, that drum, people are expecting that. So, it's not just expected, that's that's almost a melody in the song, exactly. especially that one. So if you don't know it, if you don't know it, you pretty much screwed because everybody's going to look like, oh, he don't know this song. Mm -hmm. like, even though, like, oh, it sounds good. No, like, they're looking for those parts. And so if I don't know those parts, then it's like I'm shooting myself in the foot and you kind of shooting me too because I understand that, you know, you like how I play, but at the same time, there are certain parts and certain songs that need to be played. Right. And if I don't know it, if I don't hear it, and somebody else does that's listening to me, they're going to be like, oh, he messed up. I just don't understand how that would work. Like, okay, I'm trying to think back. So I can remember a time playing guitar where my buddy, it was like bluegrass music. Uh -huh. You just stick that in the, in the chair or whatever. I'll, I'll clean up all the trash over. Um, we play bluegrass music, and with bluegrass, all you need to know if you're playing the guitar is what key you're in. And that's, that's literally the only thing you have to know because it's just going to be like one, four, five, in yeah, that key and that's yeah, it and you can generally much. keep up yep. but the drums set the pace of the whole thing so that's what i'm not following how you could possibly expect a drummer to do that without like last night she was mixing what was the massive she was doing it was like seven nation army with with uh dang it what was it what was that because it uh, was it was white stripes it was seven nation army mm -hmm. Um, it was Seven Nation Army. I'm thinking about getting a blowtorch for you. Like a, I have a big propane blowtorch I could bring out here. <laughs> Should I do that? I like While you think it. of the song? I ain't, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to remember it. Because, like, I have that, like, the thing is, I knew maybe 20% of the songs that she played. <laughs> but what you couldn't have told. From the perspective of an audience member, man, that was a good night. You were doing, you were on it. I didn't feel like this drummer doesn't know what's up. Well. It wouldn't have been your fault even if it had been it, like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, to you, to, yeah, it wouldn't have been my fault. But how do they know that? How does the audience know that? Right. That's my thing, you know. That's why I say, like, there's certain things that you play, you know, or certain certain pieces of music 
that have those significant parts that everybody know. And if I don't know them, plus, you know, the genre of music is not my most comfortable uh, spot. It's, uh, you know, it's not my most comfortable genre. If I don't know it, know those parts, how am I supposed to, you know, do it the correct way with those hits? There's another song that, uh, that she did yesterday. And the guy was like, oh, man, you did a great job. He was like, man, but I was I was looking for that one that one drum part. And I was yeah. like, I don't even know what part you're talking about. Like, yeah. I never heard that you song in my life. Song. Like, <laughs> It must be an important part of it. I'm sorry. When when Andrew's gone, I try to be really good about checking my phone. Oh, no, she's good. No. Yeah, she's going to come home now. Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> I, I never check my phone unless she's, like, out. Because I just feel like we have one car. If she needs something, if something's broken down, that's me. That's on me, and I'm I got to go help her out. Whatever. Although, luckily, our truck is like, Nice, so it doesn't break in. I take care, <laughs> but that's the only reason. Otherwise, I'm I hate that when people like check their phones. Just oh yeah, to I, same here. Same that's here. The worst. Yeah, it's like, it's, man, we're having a conversation. Let's yeah, I know. Come on. Um, so now I feel like I have to explain myself to make myself feel better. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm just I'm just still think it's so funny that we were at the same place. I mean, at the same time, you're playing for a crowd of uh, just sort of um, pontoon boating drunk white people uh, at the end of the day uh who for the most part yeah they're they're, they're kind of half listening and then they're half like having their own uh you would think party. so you would think so but some of you, them oh man get kind of discerning i guess yeah you would you would think so i learned something about playing stuff like that you would think that they're not listening but they are if it's the song they know they listening man how did you get hooked up with uh what's her name again julia julia shout out to julia james julia. man she she's She's tight. She's yeah, cool, Julia, man. you did awesome. If you hear this, you did awesome last yeah. night. Like, it was a cool show, and I love what you're doing with your voice. Come on the podcast. We'll talk about it. Yeah. But um, I don't even remember what, what? I asked you. Oh, she uh, – shouting out. <laughs> oh, yeah, how did you guys get connected? <laughs> we just go on the shout-out <laughs> track. Who else do we shout out today? Uh, the cigars are kicking in. Uh, shout-out Mickey Miller. Shout-out Eli Khan. Shout-out uh, Arthur Schroeder. That's what I said earlier. Um, uh, how we got connected. There's a guy named uh Paul Erdman that I play for, or that Trey Gray plays for. And then when Trey Gray, who also plays for Reba McIntyre and Brooks of Dunn, if he can't do it, uh, play with Paul, I usually sub in for Paul or sub in for Trey. Really, me and Trey are really good friends. He's also you know a native to South Bend, which is super dope. You know, somebody playing for you know a major right. you know artist. And they're from South Bend. There's a few of them here that you just probably really? just don't know about. Yeah. This why? Is f- why is that? Do you know why? This is how musicians. I don't know are. how people end up in certain places. That's the thing that was. It's you. That's how you know who works hard on their craft and don't. Like you know, uh, Trey has plays for Reba McIntyre. He plays for Brooks and Dunn. He plays for Paul Ehrman. And uh, I don't know how he got in those positions, but I know that it was through hard work, word of mouth, and he was at the right place at the right time. Yep. You know, and that's all pretty much all it takes. Yeah. Shout out to Brent Easton. He plays for one of the biggest, biggest recording gospel artists all over. And his name is Ricky Dillard. And he lives in South Bend as well. You know, Mickey Miller, she's her own person. And she has another a uh, couple, you know, nominations and stuff like that. Like it's just a whole lot of people that you don't know about that are actually kind of big time and they're in my own city. Yeah. South Bend. And it's just weird. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, how we got connected? Uh, right, that Paul Erdman. Paul Erdman. Uh, I started playing with him. I've been playing with him uh, on and off for about three years, three or four years, and uh, I kind of met when I got in the country scene. I was seen through him, so they was like, "Oh, who's this? You know, who's this black guy playing with Paul? You know, who's the black drummer playing with Paul?" There's not too many, you know like drummers that play country music around here here you have a bug that is enjoying your beard now there you go sorry yeah (laughs) (laughs) uh it's not too many black drums around here who play country music so like my name got around really fast and uh i met julia he's uh uh, she's cool also with paul's wife melanie and uh that's how that's how we met and then she just hit me up on uh uh social media and was like hey you know we want to connect and i was like yeah i mean i have no problem with doing that but you didn't meet last night for the first time ever no 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 so 
how do you know even if like there were some songs where you weren't playing on them does she just tell you like all right no drums on this song yeah she just told me but like when she's so she'll just start playing and you have to catch up like she'll start with the guitar how, and, I, how I normally do it is I'll let her or let the artist when that happens like that I'll let the artist play the the phrase a few times and then that whole time while that phrase is going on if I'm either I'm either communicating with the bass player who does know what the songs are or I'm figuring out what sounds right with this song right now that right. can make it somewhat resemble the original song, original track, mm-hmm. uh, or the original genre. So, uh, like, a lot of country songs all sound the same. Sure. As far right. as drum wise. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. They yeah, all have the country. same progressions most of, most, right. most of the time. They all have the same type of rhythms. You know, the drums are super easy and super disciplined. So, like, you know, Doing that with country music is not as hard as doing it with like R and B. Sure, you know, so yeah. I can I can pull that off with country a lot easier than I can pull that off with any other gig. Right, I think that's part of what makes like country or even like bluegrass roots kind of fun to play. Yeah, because you don't have to. It's it it's not nearly as technical. You don't have to know the song like that. You so just, you're just like in it. You're just feeling it. You're just enjoying the music, and it's totally different. That was always one of the most fun things for me. I had a friend who played the mandolin in high school and he was really, really good at it. And he knew so much folk music. He literally came from a family. We had like seven siblings or something like mm-hmm. that. It was like a family band. So he knew how to play any bluegrass song you right. want. And he would just be like, all right, man, like key of A, let's just go. And he'd just start singing. And that was all you had to know. And you just start playing the guitar. And uh, I just felt like that was the best sometimes. Like, yeah. Sometimes it's fun to be technical and do something really hard and play Blackbird. It just depends on the, it depends on the show too, man. Yeah. Like you don't really have to. I mean, let me not let me let me reword that. Let me reword that because you should always play your hundred percent for every gig. I always agree with that. But there's also levels to how you play, or how you. You can play a hundred percent every gig, but you don't have to play every gig that same a hundred percent that you yeah. do for the next. You I get what still, you mean. Yeah, there we I go. don't think you're gen- over generalizing. Yeah, I understand like, what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> it's like some gigs, but I think what it really is, if I'm not mistaking you, is it's it's more like a matter of, of like deep concentration or not. It's like yeah. either you can loosen up, but you're still you're still putting all the effort that you want in it. Yeah. Or not, and you can kind of because sometimes those songs don't need that. It really technically get be into it. Yeah. Right. Sometimes sometimes those songs need you to branch out. Right. Sometimes those songs don't need you to branch out, but you can still play 100% by not branching out either. Yeah. And that's, that's what a lot of people don't get, a lot of musicians don't get. Like, oh, we want you to play, you know, do your best. Do your best doesn't mean you just going for blood. Right. And you just shredding everywhere. That's not doing your best. It's mm-hmm. just actually be the best professional you can be at that moment. And you, by you being a professional, you have to decide as a professional musician what that music uh, needs at that time, you know, as a professional musician. You know, I'm not going to just walk into a country gig and play gospel, even though I can play gospel 100% and go crazy. I'm not going to come in with a whole bunch of gospel chops. I'm not going to get that gig no more. That means that's, that's losing money and that's, like, diminishing my rep as well as a musician. Mm-hmm. So as a musician, as a professional musician, you should – analyze it is up to you to analyze what you what that song or what that gig requires of you but you can are still able to play 100 mm-hmm. percent without you shredding yeah i get that yeah but it's also not all it, when you're playing with a band at least it's also not all about you which is kind of the fun part well when you're playing for an artist period yeah. like as a musician you are not the person that everybody's supposed to be paying attention to you know the the person that you're paying, that's supposed to be paid attention to, is the artist. The, why they hire you, right. you know, they hired you to play their music. Right. So why would you take the forefront of that show right. when they hired you to assist them? You assist. You don't. You know, you you're not the point guard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when it comes to basketball terms, you're not the point yeah. guard. You are you are a role player to assist the best player on your team. For the win. The most I know about basketball is that I just watched Last Dance. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so good, though. Did you watch it? Yeah. It's good. Yeah, bro. It's hey, really man. 
Mike. He's a man. Shout out to Mike too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Michael Jordan, yo. Like, yeah, he's probably listening. He's probably like <laughs> retired. You know, just ch- kicking back, looking for the best new podcast. Around. You know, you That's know, what he man. Does. You never know, about. man. It could happen. He's like, so oh, all right, that's tight. Oh, shout out everybody we talk about. Shout yeah. out to Andrea too. She's uh, she's great. Um, no, but um, my God, that was that just killed me for a second. <laughs> that's, that's really good. No, but I know what you mean, uh, and especially I think in percussion too, you're more often gonna be that assist. Way, way more often. Oh yeah, you have percussion. a role to play. Except yeah. for if you're Neil Peart, which is why I wore my Rush shirt today, mm. just specifically for you. In honor of Neil, yeah, man. who literally died, uh, hurts. Recently. Still hurts. Yeah. yeah, it does hurt. Actually, like it, it hurts. It hurts me. I'm not saying everybody needs to love Rush, but he, regardless of where you stand in any type of music you like, the mm-hmm. dude changed the game. And oh family. yeah, like he did. that's what he did. And he also had a crazy life and wrote a great book called Ghost Rider. He wrote a couple books, I think. Um, so it's a loss. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, but you know, he would be the one person I could think of where, not the whole show. But at least moments were definitely about him. And he wrote all the lyrics, so those moments were about him too. But like when he'd come out and do that drum solo, I got to see him live twice, and it was just the best. And and it was just like you knew it was hit time because the lights would, would all change. It'd be all on the drums, and he's just spinning in circles doing a solo on like four different sets around him. And it was His just... His setup was great. He, I mean, he was, to be honest with you, he was there. Who you, you, you were there, you to, were see there to see him. You yeah. just kind of yeah. were. yeah. We yeah. all love Getty. We all love Alex. But you were kind of there to see Neil Peart. And they knew that. I think so. Uh, listen, they people know that. And that's that's another reason why other artists hire you. Because, one, you can enhance their performance. That's one. But, mm-hmm. two, if the audience can say, hey, man, that drummer is, is man, he's he's a badass, yo. Yeah. Like, they're going to keep coming to those shows that that drummer is at, which means they got to come to, since he's playing for you, they come in to see, come to your show as well. So you got to understand, too, that every musician that you play with also has their individual following as well. That can add to the following of the artist. Right. Which means more people, more money for everybody, everybody's happy. Yeah. You know, but if the artists don't know that and the artists don't understand that, it's like, oh, this is my way or the highway, then they're not going to have a successful career. Right. Right. That's how a lot of bands break up. Yeah. Because you're either a collaborator or you're not. You're not. And if you're not, it's, it's, I mean, people are going to find it eventually. Absolutely. I think some people can play the game for a long time, though. Like, some people can really, some people you know aren't what they seem. A lot of celebrities. That oh, think yeah, of. for sure. And then things come out and people are like, act so surprised. It's like, no, nah, man. Nah, I, I saw this coming a long yeah. time ago. It was just a matter of time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. There's a, uh, there's some celebrities you watch and you're just like, I just don't trust that. I don't trust it. But then at the same time, you see people like, like Kevin Spacey is the one I always think of because all that shit came out about him. I, and I definitely believe it. It's some crazy stuff. It's horrible. But do you really do the performances that Kevin Spacey did? And do you really have the darkness he had without also maybe being a little fucked up as a person? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, some people can. Some people can be... Would Neil Peart have written some of the lyrics he had written if he hadn't had some of the massive hardship and sad things that he had in his life? No. No. That, no. I agree. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. So, like, but that's all I'm saying is, like, can we really expect it, people who are, like, elite performers of various levels, elite artists at least, to, to be also perfect humans? And I'm not excusing anyone's actions for doing horrible shit. No. But, like, some of the we're best gonna, artists we're gonna are find terrible out, people. We're going to find out they're yeah. not perfect people. <laughs> it's going to happen at some point. But I feel like that's what makes you. I mean, all right. I'll put it like this Kanye West. Yes. Kanye West is a perfect. I was thinking about him because we were talking about gospel music. Because yeah. he, did, he did a gospel album, right? And it was dope. Was it? What? Oh, Man, was that. He is a genius. Whether you hate him as a person or not. The man is a genius. I feel like they've been. He's been a little more open, like talking about. Uh, I feel like I heard something about him talking about having bipolar disorder, and he's just oh yeah yeah. Or, or it was like Kim uh, Kim West was talking about it or something. He's definitely to. well. Ever since his mother died, his mother was a pastor of a church. Okay. So ever since his mother, if that Jesus walks, that song was like after his mom died. Mm. Okay. So like. 
after that, that hit him so hard that he just kind of went downhill and was just like, he's, you know, turned bipolar, depression hit that, you know, like, and ever since then, he's been trying to slowly get back while also having a mentality. Like, I don't care about what nobody think about me. I don't care. Like, I'm, I'm me. Why do I care about what you think? Yeah, it's messed up when you when everybody sees everything you do all the time. And that's too. his problem too. It's like I I didn't ask to be a celebrity. I just wanted to do music. Yeah, you know. But you I got chase him around. I would get tired of that too. Like for real, I would. Yeah. I mean, I would handle it a different way, obviously. Right. But I would definitely get tired. I like being in the background. I tell people don't put my stuff, my, my name on stuff like that, or like because I don't want to be in that forefront. Mm-hmm. I choose it. I choose not to be like, hey, no, I'm cool. They can just look at the credits and see that I play. My name is going to be heard regardless. Right. So, but I don't need to be in the forefront. I don't need to have my name on something or I don't need to be in the spotlight because I don't want all that attention that comes with it. I think that's really well adjusted of you to yeah. feel that way. I don't think yeah. most people feel that way, too. I think a lot of us kind of, I'm saying us because it's me included, mm-hmm. have a hard time not having the spotlight. It's difficult. We try. You have a different situation, though. So, so for you, especially when it comes, I would even just talk about podcasts. Like this is your, this is your almost your business, you know, your passion. So you want that spotlight, so you can get the viewers that you need, so you can almost get out of the spotlight when it's time, mm-hmm. you know. But you need that spotlight, so your viewers can come. For me, I'm a drummer. I don't need that spotlight, you know. I just need to do my job, and and be happy with my gift. Yeah, you know, but. My career doesn't entail me being in that spotlight. I don't have. I can, I can. I have. A, I have the the choice to, but I don't have to. I have a choice not to as well. And because I have that choice, I choose not to. But that's my, that is my situation. You know, like I said, for like somebody like you that's doing podcasts, like like you, you know, just doing guitar, like right. you know, you doing your stuff. Right. Like you almost have to have the mindset to be in the spotlight to do what you do. Yeah. You know, so it all depends on your career. Right. Yeah. It's weird. It's, yeah, I got you. It's, um, the, the bus break. Break. This is the worst chairs. <laughs> um, spotlights. Yeah. Spotlights. Um, you, but you have a different spotlight that you need to be in. Because to have more opportunities to play the kind of music you want to play, the spotlight you need on you is from your other musician friends. Yep. You need opportunities for other musicians to say, this guy, I want to work with him. I like what he's doing. So it's a different kind of spotlight. I mean, mine may try to appeal to more of a, I don't know, maybe just a larger crowd, mm-hmm. a less specific crowd. Yeah. But it's different. And the other thing is, like, for for me, I don't know. Andrea and I do the Wild Hickson's thing, and I've got the podcast and all that. and But... At the end of the day, I, I wouldn't be doing podcasting if that's what I wanted was to have like a massive listenership. You're totally gonna burn a finger off. Feel bad? I didn't get a better lighter. <laughs> Is it working? All right, we're good. Um, I I just do this because I could do this all day, and uh, if if I got this to a point where. I think the the dream point would literally just be that the only thing I need taken care of is I I want some help finding guests. I want someone to help me organize getting guests on the show and mm-hmm. arranging times and all that stuff. Like right. that would be great, and I can't do that right now because it's just a hustle for now. Um, so it's all me still. Right. But um, that's all I really need. I that's what I want to do all day. And I the other thing is I'd like to work with sponsors who. I like their product anyway. Like the only reason, so Track Farms is a sponsor of the show right now. Okay. And I love these guys. They're from Illinois. I went to college with uh, one of the dudes in the company and they send me CBD products and I get to talk about how much I like them. That's it. Like that's really simple. Otherwise I'd be buying CBD, which is expensive by the way. So True. I get them to send me that and then I talk about them. I tell everybody how great they are. That's the, that's the dream as a podcaster is just I want to make conversation all day and if I get to work with cool sponsors, whatever, that's that's its own thing. But it's not like I feel like the goal would be to have millions and millions of listeners. That's not how right. I see it. Because I know that, first of all, the odds of that, I mean, they're, li- they're low. Yeah. Uh, I, let me ask you this then. So do you look at other podcasters like Joe Rogan, like his journey and how he did it to uh, 
as a do you look at it as a model to get to where i mean because joe rogan has thousands mm -hmm. and millions of followers you know to as a podcast person you right know? so is that do you look at certain people like that for your podcast to get to where you want to be i look at what he did i look at what he did in the context of what i want to do uh -huh. so where and someone is just revving that harley you go for it bud yeah you do that rev it all right big day <laughs> um, I look at the fact that he's able to do this so constantly. Like he, like he's putting out like an episode a day, and they're like three hours long. And you know that that means he's recording like three hours a day, roughly. Right, right. So this is what this guy gets to do. That's what I'd love to do. So how does he get there? He starts by just doing it constantly. He's on episode fifteen hundred something right now. He's literally just a maniac about doing it. And so I feel like the more that I do it, not only will my skills build in doing it and people mm -hmm. would, I could make some people want to listen to, but also, um, I'll have the chance to have more and more people who want to be part of it. That's uh, true. that's, I think that's the, the thing for me. And then what I watch is the language. I'm obsessed with words. Like I love reading. I love listening to podcasts. I, I just love how language works. And so when I'm listening, it's, it's with a critical ear to like, man, how did he get that out of that person? Right. Like, how did he ask that question the right way? to get it out because I think there's a perfect way to do it I think there's a perfect way to structure the English language to have a conversation that's just that's just meta that just disappears into you know something that we don't understand when we're just having small talk right right and all of a sudden everybody opens up and we all start to connect and all these things and if you can use the language right and that's what I can't do I know that about myself I have a certain level I like doing it I practice it a lot I probably could do it a little better than the average person but I'm still just nobody, and and I want to work to get to a point where I could do that so well mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who I'm interviewing. Like you could sit anyone in the chair, and I'm not going to feel intimidated. I'm going to get them to that space. So that's what I obsess over, I guess. That's that's pretty dope. Because I see it. Dope. Yeah, yeah, I see it. You look at you look at famous drummers, of whom I can name one. Uh, because that's just me. I don't know famous drummers. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's fine. Oh uh, no, I can name two. You know, Ringo Starr. That's everybody's got. Oh yeah, Ringo. Ringo. Um, so you look at famous drummers, and you're you're not looking at like, I, man, I'd like to be as famous as that guy, or I'd like to play in a band that's as big as that one. Maybe to an extent, maybe to an extent, sure. And I'd like to have the listenership Joe Rogan has, but mostly it's because that opens opportunities to do the thing you want to do at a level that is just beyond kind of your wildest dreams like right. the ability to play the only thing you have to do is play the drums today the only thing you have to do this week is play the drums that's the only thing you have to do you get to live your life but like that's the only thing you have to do yeah and you're going to play with some of the best musicians in the world you're going to record at some of the coolest spots in the world you're going to listen to that end product and realize that you've achieved something that's just massive beyond right. what you thought you'd do we're both midwest kids like mm -hmm. to make it that that's that's something different. So that's the same way I guess I look at podcasts. I guess it's like I'm looking at you're breaking down what that drummer's doing, and you're like, I want to learn how to get to that level. Yeah. Like I want to have that technicality, that artistry, and that's how I see language and podcasting. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty dope. And to just to bounce off that, you know, I also look at it as journeys. Like you said, you mm -hmm. kind of break down uh, what the in my in my situation you know i look at different musicians and study you know how did they get to where they at right what am i missing that they got you yeah. know and or you know what can i take from them to to because i have my own journey you know i don't want to mimic somebody else's journey i want to have my own journey i think that's that is the best thing for me and that's what i enjoy enjoy most about being a musician is that i create my own story yeah i create my own story and that's the one thing I look about being Lalo. I create my own story with Lalo. And any drummer has to play for Lalo, they got to listen to what I played yeah. and create their own story from what I played. That yeah. is the joy of being a professional musician because you create your own story. You create, you have the ability, you have the, you know, well, you're supposed to have the ability and the mindset as a musician, as a professional of anything to create your own story, your own journey. That's, that's, but I, I think you're unique for thinking that way. I really do. <laughs> Cause I don't think a lot of people look at the world and say, I'm going to assert my viewpoint on the world. And that's, I get to tell that story. I have one shot to tell that story and I'm going to tell that story. I think people sometimes just go into default mode and forget that they could do something that's You're unique. Like, oh, that's like, all them. I'm not going to make it unless I just follow what this person do. Yeah, because they think there's rules. They think there's rules. They're, How do you think that person got there? 
<laughs> that's that's he my broke question. a bunch of rules. They were like, "There's not rules." That's always that's my all that's my rebuttal to everybody that tells me that. It was like, well, I had a I had a, a nice little conversation slash debate with somebody, and along the lines of that, and they were like, you know, well, I mean, yeah, you can have your own story, but what makes well, what makes you think that your story, you know, is going to have the same effect as somebody that's greater? And I'm like, I understand that, you know, but I'm not looking for that. The thing is, for me, they create. How do you think they got there? Like, yeah. you know, John Mayer is, for instance, you know, he has a sound that's like so soulful and so weird, but his his genre, is, he has his own genre to me too. Right. Like, you know, but if he would have listened to everybody else, he would have just did the same old thing because of his voice. It sounds more like country mm-hmm. or like, you know, a little bit popish, you know. He, he could have just took that, you know, route and just did that. But he decided to create his own story. And then if people liked it, they was going to like it. And if they didn't, they didn't. But regardless, he was creating his own story. And so because of that, he is at he is where he's at now. Right. So if he didn't decide to do that, you know, he would be in the same boat. Like, he wouldn't be John Mayer, how we know. Right. So if he, how I look at it is, every person is they have their own uh have their own experience have their own thing and have their own passion and stuff like that but they're all the same we all start out the same way we all are you know we all come out of a, a woman's womb you know they weren't they they didn't just come out the womb it was like oh yeah he's good he's gonna yeah. be he's gonna be the best no they had to work and had to do something different within their career to bring out their own story yeah. And so that people can like it. Yeah. And that's what that was, you know, and that's, I feel like I'm on the same level as John Mayer when it comes to that, because I am creating my own story. Hey, Andrew just Hello. got here. We're recording. He was on, he was playing the drums yesterday. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled up the live. I had to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> He's in the background that's playing so the drums. Awesome. That was funny. Yeah. That was so good. But, but okay, I just don't want to lose that point really quick because I, I think people start to compete and compare stories. Mm-hmm. And it's like someone's story is more worth telling than your story, whatever. I, I couldn't disagree with m- more with that. Per- mostly because I think even a shitty story told really well right. is a great story. Exactly. Like how many amazing movies can you name where it's like, like okay, I'm thinking of the movie Reservoir Dogs now. For whatever reason, that's the first one pop in my head. Okay. Because what is okay. it? It's just a bunch of dudes in a warehouse. Mm-hmm. That's the whole. I don't think there's anything else that happens in that movie. It's not just a bunch of dudes in a warehouse, right? Mm-hmm. It's been a while, but like, on the surface, shitty story. Like what? They're in a warehouse and they're arguing about stuff for 90 minutes. Yep. It's like yeah, and then it turns into a great story because it's well told, mm-hmm. and um, that's why I think that's why I think some people feel like my story is not worth telling, and. That's not true. You just have to work on a way to tell it that is going to engage people. Exactly. You got to flip your story around to to dra- to grab the attention of the audience that you're telling it to. Yeah. Whether you don't even, I mean, in my, for me, I tell my story through my playing. You know, you tell your story through your podcast. Yeah. You know, everybody tells their story through their different passion. And, but it's how you can translate your story to grab the attention of the art or of the audience that's listening to you. Right. And not forget about them, too. And not Not leave them behind. No, yeah. It's a balance. It's a balance. It's definitely a balance. It's like a... It's it's a yin and yin and yang. Yeah. It's it's definitely a yin and yang. You want to push them, but not be that person that's like, this should be challenging to listen to. Like, you should learn a lot from this and, like, take away... I want want you to be bored listening to this story because, like, I feel like, you know, that'll challenge you as a person. Like, I hate that. No, question. no. Like, like, you should listen to my story because if you listen to my story, then it will help you in the long run. I mean, yeah, but let me listen to your story. Let me listen to your story in my own context by you doing what you do. Yeah. And not by you just telling me. Yeah. And then it's because I can see your story by what you do. Yeah. I'm looking at your story. And that, just to put a beautiful bow on this. I feel like that is the gift that you're talking about. Exactly. Is someone who translates their story in a way that other people can connect to, and they tell that story in a good way. Exactly. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about playing the drums or playing the guitar. It doesn't matter. Or writing movie scripts or doing a podcast. Whatever your passion is, if you can tell your story, you win. 
That's a gift. That is the gift. I like some that. people can't do that. I think everybody should try. But that's the scary thing for people. Mm-hmm. They were like, people are scared to branch out. People are scared to fail. That is a huge thing right now. I People love me playing the drums because they say I'm a huge risk taker. I never play the same way. Never. Mm-hmm. There's not one time that in any gig that I have played the exact same way on on a show because I feel like, you know, how I look at it, it's it's my story. I want you to know me like, oh, this drummer, you don't know what he's going to come up with. Yeah. <laughs> what is he going to do? To, what is he going to yeah. do today? Like, oh, man, for this show, what is he? That's why. So Sam, uh, Sam, the good, uh, the sax player and uh, Lalo, um, he explained my playing like to the T. It's the best way I've ever heard um, him say it. And he pretty much said, you know, the difference between me and other drummers is that I, like I said, I play. You don't know what you're going to expect. But every time I do play, it's going to match. But you have no idea. It's the thrill of you having no idea what I'm about to do. But you're so, ex- you're, you know it's going to be great. You know it's going to be good. But you have no idea what I'm going to do. And so the, the, the thought of that is like, um, it's, it's just a surprise element of it. And, you know, some people are scared to fail because they're afraid that that surprise element is not going to be good enough for, for what they're doing. And yeah. I'm like, you can't, you you can't decide that. Like you, if you're, if you're deciding that, you know, I can't be myself or I can't take a risk, then you already lost. You already lost. This is a big chess match. Like you lost. <laughs> yeah. If you're scared to take that to, to fail, that's why I go back to the whole fail thing. If you're scared to fail, then you're not, you're not willing to grow. That's part of the growth. If you won't fail, then you're not growing. Will Smith said the best, like, you know, failure is nothing more than a, than a step forward. I have hope for people, though. I of think course. people can flip it on at any point. Yeah. It might be something that I feel like I can access now and you feel like you can access now. And I think we both probably tapped into it pretty young. Mm-hmm. But you know there's people who don't hit it until they're 55, 60, and they make a change. But I, that's the joy I think of it. Anybody there's no can. time limit. There isn't. Yeah, well, no there limit. is a time limit. But I mean, if you like sixty, you're and gonna you still, die. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody dies, and you don't know when you're gonna die. But, but I still feel like there's no time limit, you know, as far as that, because again, that goes back to what I'm saying. That's your journey. Even a minute of living the way you want to live is better than never experiencing it even once. I agree. It's like uh, it's like bucket list stuff. People find mm-hmm. out the terminal cancer, and they're like, "Now I'm gonna start living." It's like, dude, great. You're well. You're gonna have six months to do that, and I'm happy for you. But like, you've had sixty years. Like, what were you doing? I think living by society, living what they thought society would like them to do. Yeah, and that's what usually shoot people in the foot. Yeah, gotta get, gotta get past it. Yeah, you have to. But it's hope. a, it's a systematic thing, though. Like, it's okay. And when the world shakes it up, sometimes yeah. that's a moment. Sometimes COVID hits. It's like we were saying earlier, sometimes COVID hits and 2020 is like, what's happening? Maybe that's an opportunity to do that thing you've been putting off to get started and to fail. There's always darkness. I mean, there's always light in the darkness. Always. Always. You always find some type of out. It may be small, maybe super small where you feel like you cannot fit through to get through that darkness, to get to that light. You can see that light, but it's super small. So you have to figure out a way how to make that light that much bigger so that you can get through. It's just like uh, some people say having a foot in the door, you know. Like you you have to you have to get over that. You have to go through that darkness to see that light, though. <laughs> and no one's going to do it for you. And nobody's going to do it for you. Now, you can sink in that dark darkness, and that's why I say people are, like, scared to fail because they're they like, well, once I see this darkness, once I see this failure, I, it, I'm finished. Why I don't understand. I still don't understand why people think that way. Of like, okay, well, I failed. Cool. All right. So what am I gonna do now? No, it's like, all right, I failed. So how am I gonna get around this roundabout? (laughs) (laughs) How am I gonna drive on the wrong side of the road? So like, do I need to go? Do I need to go through the wrong side of the road to get back to the right one? Yeah. Or do I need to just go around, take an extended route around to get there? 
or can I just bust through it? Yeah. I think bust through it every time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, but the, that's, that's, that's the most violent way. I call it the, the Mamba mentality when you want to bust through it like that. <laughs> the Kobe mentality. Yeah, okay. Because, you, you, you know, Kobe had this mentality like you can't beat me. Right. Period. It's mindset. It's mindset. You, yeah. decide, you decide before you start a task yeah. if you're going to do it or not. You really do. If you're going to try. Are you a loser or are you a winner? That kind of defines that. Like, yeah. I don't think it's that black and white, though. I wouldn't go there with you. You just, I think, cause I, cause I think you decided on every single thing you undertake. That's what I'd say. So, okay. and I, I'm, I would agree that like, okay, if out of a hundred times you decide to be a winner, 51 of them, we call you a winner. If you decide you're going to be a loser, 51 of them, we call you a loser. Yep. I think it's so much broader than that because no, no one action makes you a winner or a loser. True. And often it's like being a loser first that can make you a winner too. Mm-hmm. That can help at least. It can help. I kept you here way too long. Do you know that? Yeah, sorry. We're in the time warp. He's all right. I enjoyed this conversation. Me too, man. I really have. I'm glad you came out. Let's um, let's make sure people can find you on social media, things like that. Yeah. So what's your Instagram and stuff like so that? So my Instagram is uh, B underscore C-A-N-E, all lowercase. Um, that is my Instagram. You can find me on there. Uh, you can uh, also, I also want you to check out uh, Lalo Cura. Um, you can find them on uh, Lalo Cura Rock. Um, at Lalo Cura Rock, L A L O C U R A Rock. Um, and then uh, as far as Facebook, you can find me at Brendan Kane, B R E N D Y N, uh, last name Kane, C A N E. And then you can find us, uh, find Lalo as well on uh, um, L A L O C U R A on Perfect. Facebook. And that's our page. What's the recent thing? What are you, what are you trying to promote right now? You said you had some new songs, like a new EP you were talking about, maybe? Oh, yeah. Actually, I have a few things. I also, I, I have a, I'm actually working on my own project. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, it's, I'm looking at it to be, uh, it's going to be my EP. I'm looking at it to be put out uh, next April in the cool. springtime. Um, but as far as Lalo go, we have our new single uh, called Stars and Stripes or Prankus Astranos. And uh, you got it right that time. I did. I, I did. I did. <laughs> he's not gonna kill me. No, no. <laughs> come on. It's a. It, you just tell him like it's a podcast. Like yeah. if you try to get a word out and you say it wrong ten times first, that's exactly that's how it goes. Exactly. So um, yeah, you can find me on there. You can find Lalo on there. Um, if you want, I I again, like I said, I don't play for Lalo. I also play for a guy named Trey Marquis, who's a upcoming artist, uh, R and B, super super great. Um, his stuff is also on iTunes and all social platforms. And I play for an amazing rapper, and his name is Jesus. Um, he, I also have some stuff on iTunes with him as well as far as live sets and stuff like that. So if you want to catch that, um, Jesus, H-E-Y, um, Zeus, Z-E-U-S, um, you can also catch that stuff too as well. Perfect. Shout I'll out to you. Jesus, man. Shout out to Trey. The last shout out. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll put all those links and and um ads in the description on the episode too so if you want to find those people i'll have you send them to me and then i'll just put them right there Perfect. people go find them and listen to you play man um brendan thanks for being on the podcast it's been an absolute pleasure man it was a great man. day for it we just oh, yeah, beautiful day hanging out here um snap a picture before you go too i'll have andrea help us this time i don't have to use a tripod which is pretty sweet hey. and um as always people can find me uh at t hicks and life on instagram and twitter and I'll post this picture and kind of you'll get the vibe of what we're doing here since you've been hearing the birds and the kids playing. It's a nice, it's a nice spot, you know, mm-hmm. it's kind of one of those. It's quiet, man. It's, it's kind of those it's big relaxing. campgrounds that feels, it's it's too big, but, you know, it's convenient, so it works. Um, let's check them out. Thank you to our sponsor, Track Farms. Go get some CBD uh, tinctures. And Bud is my favorite new one. Uh, the Bud, for me, is just a lot of fun to kind of like smoke it however you would like to. Um, but the tinctures are great for you every day and go check me out at track-farms.com slash strangers use code strangers to get 15% off thanks everybody for listening as always we will see you on the next episode